Hey everyone, I'm just going to get my notes ready. I'm super excited to go over my favorite model. The different way to think about things, different way to consider how to tackle a goal. I've got my chalkboard with me today, which is going to be really, really helpful in explaining this. And I'm just really excited. I'm going to hang out for a little bit and wait for a couple people to tune in just in case anyone has any questions. And then we'll get started. Uh, yeah, this model was presented to me. I got a business coach last year and she presented this model to me in a number of different situations. And I really think that it can apply to any goal that you're after, whether that's wanting to lose weight, whether it's wanting to qualify for the CrossFit Games, whether it's wanting to have a six pack, to be the CEO of a company, to create your own business, whatever it is, this model is going to apply. And I think that it's going to be super useful for you guys today. So I'm going to start and the way that it goes, I'm going to start, I'm going to draw it on the board because it's super visual to see it is that, I just dropped my chalk. I'm gonna bring us a little closer without freaking out the dog too much. So this is my chalkboard. So we are A. This is where we are when we're starting any type of journey, when we're starting a, before we start on a mission to accomplish some type of goal, we're at A. The goal is B. Super similar to what I was talking about before, but we're starting over here and we have a goal or an outcome or whatever it is we're trying to achieve. Now, there is this funnel that is attached to this. So it goes like this. And within this funnel over here, I call it the zone of optimal behavior. Inside this funnel over here is going to be your zone of optimal behavior. So the goal is to get from A and we're traveling all the way to B. The zone of optimal behavior is where what you're doing is appropriate in order to get you towards that goal. And as you notice, it gets narrower when you get closer to your goal. So I'm going to use an example to illustrate this so that you can really understand what it is I'm trying to get at. So when you start, you've not even started to accomplish your goal at all. Over here, you've fully realized whatever it is that you're after. So I'm going to use qualifying for the NBA as an example, so basketball. So when you start playing basketball, let's say you're a little kid and you've just gotten interested in it and the, the, what you're allowed to be able to do is they just want you having fun. You're allowed to hold the ball and run with it. You don't even have to move in the appropriate direction. You can dribble the ball. You can throw it off the court. They just want the kids on the court playing with the basketball, having a good time. So that's over here. Now, when we move a little bit further down and we're over here, you're going to have to start moving in the right direction. You're going to have to play offense. You're going to have to play defense. You're going to have to learn how to dribble the ball. You're going to have to learn how to shoot the ball. That's where it, that's the skills come into play. So then when we move a little bit further on, you're going to have to start practicing. So you're going to have to actually practice certain drills to be able to get better at playing the game. So now we're not only having to move in the right direction, we're not only going to have to be offensive defense, but we're also going to have to actually practice with our team outside of games. Now, when we move a little bit closer, let's say we're in high school now. You not only have to practice, you're also going to have to start working out. So now your physical fitness is going to have a factor into whether you're going to be a good basketball player or not. Maybe you're going to have to do some um, different style of workouts. You're going to have to lift weights and they're also going to have to go to practice and you're also going to have to do all that kind of things. Now we get a little bit closer and we want to play college ball. So if you want to play college ball, you want to get into a good college. You might have to get a certain, certain GPA. So you need to get certain grades. You also need to work out. You also need to uh, be at practice. You need to be a good team player. Now if we get even a little bit closer to the NBA, 
let's say we're right over here. So you've been had an awesome college ball career and you're trying to get drafted to an NBA team. Now it takes into account your actual personal life. So the media gets involved. If you've, uh, I, some players get kicked off teams for having DUIs or having other issues and some, some maybe criminal offenses or things like that, your personal life gets taken into account. You have to be a good role model as well. So that gets taken into account in order to get to B. What is you can't do anymore when you're over here is you can't just move in the right direction. So moving in the right direction, which when we were little kids, is probably somewhere over here. So over here, you just need to have a good time and move in the right direction. So when we move closer to B, now we're outside of the zone of optimal behavior. So just having a good time and moving in the right direction is outside of this zone right here. So it's outside. And what you call this is a choice point. So if you still want to move towards B and you still want to accomplish this goal, you now have a choice. So your choice is either to adjust and move into the zone of optimal behavior or you leave. And you just abandon attacking B altogether. So those are, that's a choice point. People often, when they're in this situation, so when you get to this situation, when you're out of the zone of optimal behavior, and this applies for any single goal, I'll use a couple other examples as well. When you're here, people want to go back to A. That's the, a very, very important part of this model is that you can't go back to A. Everything behind this point is gone. It's no longer available. The option's not there. You can no longer just move in the right direction. You either have to move into the zone of optimal behavior or you have to leave. There is no option of going back to where it's comfortable. And that's what a lot of us do when we get to a difficult point of when we're trying to achieve a goal. We're like, well, this used to work. I used to be able to make progress if I was doing X, Y, and Z, but it's not working anymore because you're outside of that zone of optimal behavior. And it's just not an option to go back to A. It's also important to remember that when this is being applied to something like nutrition, it's, and even basketball, for any single goal, this line is not linear. So it's gonna be something like, and that's what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look super crazy, super messy, you're gonna be making mistakes, you're gonna be in the zone, out of the zone, you're gonna be on your way, but at least you're moving forwards. So that doesn't mean that you have to be perfect and you have to always be inside the zone of optimal behavior in order to reach your goals, but it does mean that you have to be working towards B and when you get here to a choice point, you have to decide to move back inside. And if you don't move back inside, then you can't work towards B anymore. But there is one other option that you do have a choice in this matter, and that other option is C. And that could be a different goal entirely. Maybe you're working towards your B and you realize that this just B isn't your goal anymore. So you can choose C and you can start heading towards there and we call that a pivot. So you can decide to just no longer go, move towards B and move in a different direction altogether. I would take make that decision lightly because you can always decide to choose C and D and E and F and G, and you really can decide to do a million different things. But if you're not um, sure, if you really are connected to this B, you're gonna have to get into this zone of optimal behavior. So let's use weight loss for an example. The perfect example for here is, you know, that last five pounds is always the hardest to lose. And why is it the hardest to lose? I mean, when you start a weight loss journey, let's say you have 30 pounds to lose. You can probably estimate a little bit. You probably don't have to be super precise with your macros. You can eat out at restaurants more often. You don't have to be in control of what you're eating. And you're working towards this B of losing 30 pounds. So maybe over here, you can, you lose five pounds and you can estimate, you can be super social, you can go out to restaurants and you can still make all that progress that you're after. Here, now, if we're trying to get to that last five pounds, if I see this point, 
I move it all the way across, that's now become a choice point. And it's no longer in the zone of optimal behavior. And that's right around where those last five pounds would be. And when those last five pounds are coming out and you're super frustrated that you're not seeing any progress, it might be that your behavior is just no longer in that zone of optimal behavior. And that's the same thing with getting a six pack, for instance. When you're trying to get a six pack, it's the same thing. You can get leaner with estimating, you can get leaner with going on vacations, you can get leaner with not being in control of your food, and you can continue, continue, and continue until you get to a choice point where you've gotten as lean as you could get with that zone of optimal behavior over here, but when you're here, you're not going to be making progress anymore doing those behaviors and you're not going to get that six pack that you want being outside of the zone of optimal behavior. So you have a choice. You can either abandon the rule, the goal altogether, and you can head towards C, or you can change the behavior and move into the zone of optimal behavior. And that's totally what your coach is for, is let them know what's going on, let them know what's working for you, what's not working for you, that you're, that you're frustrated, and they'll tell you what it's gonna take to get to 10% body fat or 13% body fat for females. And that's not gonna come without sacrifice. I can promise you that. If you wanna get really lean and you wanna maintain that leanness, it's going to take being in this zone of optimal behavior. And of course, once you achieve the goal, then there's a new goal and your zone of optimal behavior gets wide again. So things, things definitely have an ebb and flow, but generally with one goal, this is what it's gonna look like, is that you're gonna start somewhere and you're heading somewhere else, and then there's going to be this zone of where things are appropriate or you can still make progress, and it's slowly, slowly, slowly gonna start getting narrower as you get closer to your goal. And this can even apply to businesses, like working against gravity, for instance. When we first started, in 2014, we had one email box and all of the clients would email one email box and whichever coach was available would answer your check-in. And this was how we operated. And that was totally appropriate. Nobody complained, it was never an issue. But now imagine if we did that now. Imagine if we had all of you guys talking to some random coach every single day then that, was, that eventually, very quickly actually, became out of the zone of optimal behavior. So we had a choice point of create something new, create a new option, move into the zone of optimal behavior, and then continue working towards B, which is our goal of helping as many people as possible transform their lives in some type of capacity. So it really does work with any type of goal that you're after, it's just really important most important, the most important thing of the entire model is really being clear on what your B is. Like, what is it even that you're after? If it's something that you're really clear and you've clearly defined that this is very important to you, you're going to be willing to do whatever it takes. The problem is when you haven't clearly defined what it is that you're after. So you could say, I want a six pack, but clearly define that. Why do you want a six pack? What is that going to do for you? Is that going to increase certain aspects of your life? And it totally might. I can totally appreciate what that's all about. It makes you feel super confident. You're going to feel really sexy. The lower body fat's going to help you perform in the gym. It's going to make you lighter, faster, quicker. Whatever it is that is your justification, you have to be very clear on the B and what it is and why you're going after it. So that's a number of examples. I will go through one more example before I, uh, before I sign off, but this is an opportunity if you guys have any questions about this, um, post them to the comments, and if there's no questions by the end of this last example, then I will uh, sign off and let you guys go for the day, and this will be up in the Facebook group so you guys can re-watch it, um, and you can always comment after, tag me, and ask any questions, and I'd be happy to respond. So I'm going to start over. So I'm going to use um, qualifying for the CrossFit Games as an example. So here's A and here's B. 
And for those of you that don't do CrossFit, qualifying for the CrossFit Games is really similar as qualifying for the Olympics or qualifying for World Championships. It's a really, really difficult event to qualify. It's very similar to qualifying for the NBA, uh, the NHL, the NFL, whatever professional sports league that you follow. It's very similar. So this is A. You're just starting CrossFit. You've never done CrossFit before. You're pretty athletic, but you've never really d dabbled in the sport yet. B is qualifying for the CrossFit Games. Now here is our zone of optimal behavior. So you're chugging along, you're going to the CrossFit classes, you're going to like around four or five CrossFit classes a week, it's probably four or five hours of working out a week, and that's working well for you. You're making progress, you're hitting PRs, and that's what's going on. Now here, you're going to four or five hours of class, CrossFit classes a week, Still, that's still over here, but you're also incorporating, you know, one to two days of recovery. Maybe you're doing some ROMWOD, you're doing one or two days of ROMWOD, and that's helping you recover to prevent injury, to be able to perform your best. Now we keep moving forward, you add in some accessory sessions. So you're still doing the one to two days of ROMWOD a week, you're still doing the four to five hours of CrossFit classes a week, but now you're also adding in some extra accessory work. And this is all still in the zone of optimal behavior. Now you're going to have to get a CrossFit coach. You need a coach who's going to be programming for your individual weaknesses. So you have a CrossFit coach, you're doing accessory work, you're doing some ROMWOD, and you're doing the four to five classes a week. So now you can see this is quickly approaching a choice point. So Doing the wrong one in your recovery, doing your accessory work, getting a coach for programming is likely going to be continued to be necessary all the way to B. This over here is quickly going to become out of the zone of optimal behavior and it's going to become a choice point. And this is going to be you either, most CrossFit Games athletes don't just participate in the classes for their workouts. So they're going to have to do something that's programmed by a coach, or they're going to have to do a lot of extra exercise. They're going to have to likely be working out much more than four to five hours a week. So it's going to often be four hours a day um, with some rest days in there. So this is a choice point. Do you decide that you're going to work towards C, which is maybe C is trying a different sport altogether. I've seen some athletes go into weightlifting. I've seen some athletes go into bobsled. Um, whatever it is that you decide to do, is powerlifting, are you going to choose a different C altogether? Or are you going to just leave and abandon the goal? Or are you going to go into the zone of optimal behavior and decide that you want to continue trying to make it to the CrossFit Games? So I challenge you guys to take any goal that you're after right now, whether that's getting a promotion at your job, whether that's um, being a better wife or a better husband, a better mother, a better father, uh, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve and think about it in this model and think about what behaviors that you're doing that fall a little bit outside of that zone of optimal behavior if you've stopped making progress. So if you're frustrated with your lack of progress and you feel like you could be doing better and you really want to get to be your, your goal or your outcome, then I challenge you to think about this and think about maybe there's certain things that you're doing or certain behaviors that you're constantly participating in that are choice points for right now. That doesn't mean that you can't make mistakes. It doesn't mean that you can't hit a choice point, get back in, get out again, and have to hit another choice point, get back in, get out again, maybe move back a little bit, but there's no option to go back to A. So once you've decided that you're going towards B and you're staying towards B, you can't go back to just four to five hours of classes a week. It's not going to take you closer towards B. That's not an option anymore, it's gone. You're not gonna continue making progress there. So that's important to remember. Don't, make, don't get too hard on yourselves for getting out of the zone of optimal behavior. You have tons of time, B's not going anywhere, and you can always choose another option altogether. Uh, but if you're really passionate and you're really sure about what you want in terms of B, I would definitely stick to it and talk to your coach about what they think that maybe could be some behaviors that bring you back into the zone of optimal behavior and uh, see what they think. I hope this was helpful for you guys. I know it was super helpful for me and it's helped me in so many different aspects of running this company, of being an athlete, as well as with my nutrition. So.
Thanks, guys.